I'm Sam Ohugan. I'm the Kumuoli, the, the chant master, the chant teacher in the halau of Kumujan Keola Lake. When Kumu Lake uh, passed, he passed that kuleana to me and my kokumu, who is in charge of the hula side of the halau. We're both the kumu of halau mele. He gave us instructions to continue that halau and to, and to make it grow. So, uh, so we engage in the, in the protocols and the ceremonies that he taught us. We will be doing a number of chants and a number of dances. Some of the dances are uh, dances of welcome to the group that's going to be here. One of the dances is going to recognize the wildness of the weather during the winter months. Um, and uh, it is in recognition of the time of Lono that's passing. Um, and another of the chants is going to be in recognition of the most exalted of the Ku gods that were worshipped by the, by the Ali'i of old. The dichotomy between Ku and Lono was, uh, was a way to divide the year into two halves. And uh, when you think about it, the four major gods of Hawaii, Ku, Lono, Kane, and Kanaloa, um, represented all of space and time in the Hawaiian universe. So rather than just being, oh, you know, it's like the Greek gods, Zeus is, has lightning and so-and-so has volcanoes and, and the like. No, it's a, it's, it was a way to record knowledge of the way the universe operated. Um, it personified them, but in gauging their behaviors, you could tell exactly what was going on in the world during that time of year and in that particular place. So Kahane is the god of fresh water and essentially the land, because the land is where fresh water is. Kanaloa is the god of the sea. And so Kane and Kanaloa represent the land and sea, so all of space. And Ku and Lono represent the winter and the summer and the cycles in between them. So space and time are represented by those four gods. And so the chants and dances that we're, that we're going to be performing, they honor all of those and are going to be shared. Well, you know, nowadays we live in the 21st century and it seems like every day is the same as any other day. Wake up at a certain time, do what, do your thing, and, then, and the like. But in the past, it was really important to pay attention to what was going on during different times of the year. In the Hawaiian uh, way of the world, there were two major seasons. The Ho'oilo, which was the wet, cooler season, corresponds to the winter months. And then the kauvela, the hot season, which corresponds to the summer. There wasn't really a spring or fall. There was just the transition between the two. And when you think about it, um, the transition was based on astronomical signs. And so pay attention to the phases of the moon. You pay attention to where the sun rises and sets. And on this day, and on this day only, the sun sets right into the cusp of Pu'ukapole behind me when seen from this particular place. And so the significance of all this is that place and time were paid attention to. You would have to know that in order to plant plants at the right season, guarantee that they get the rain that they need. You need to know that when you're doing cross-oceanic voyaging in order to, to guarantee or to maximize your chances that you're going to have good weather on the way from here to Tahiti or the like. And so you had to really pay attention day by day to the world around you, the stars, the moon, the sun. And today is a special day. It's the day of the transition from the Ho'oilo, the wet season, into the Kauvela, the, the hot, dry season. We're entering into, into the month of Velo. And, or we're in Velo and we're heading into another month. But at any rate, um, the idea is that um, knowing that was a matter of of life or death sometimes. Because all of the seasons and all of the weather and all of the availability of water and the way that crops grow would be, would be determined on those kinds of, on those kinds of things. So, um, so paying attention to that in ancient times was way more important than, than it is today. The combination of Hawaiian chant and ceremony in the wild winds and rains of the Ko'olau, we acknowledge with an offering of hula to Hi'iaka Ikapoleo Pele, the sister of Pele, who encountered those wild Ko'olau. Ko'olau! But certainly, uh, when you think about it, the different times of the year 
were recognized by the different gods that were prevalent during those times of year. When you think about it, the, the, the time of winter was the time of the makahiki. So makahiki season was a time of games, warfare was forbidden, um, you took a break from agriculture, all of the harvesting had been done, you're giving the, the soil a chance to fallow and to prepare for the next, the next year's uh, growing season. And so the, the recognition of all of that and the changing over from the time of Lono, which is Makahiki time, to the time of Ku, which is the time of the, of the hot summer months, um, happens now. And so you have to mark something that's significant. To go from a time of rest and peace and relaxation of the restrictions of everyday life into a time of governance and, and harsh um, attention to the, to the rules and the laws under the Ali'i, um, that, was, that was today. This was the transition part. And so you recognize that with a goodbye to Lono, with a goodbye to the, that god of that season, and a welcoming in of, of Ku. Um, for example, where we are now is close to where there was a large heiau, a heiau of governance, the Luakini heiau. That was the, the heiau of one of the great chiefs of, of uh, O'ahu, Kakuhiheva. And, uh, and it's kind of, it's kind of neat that we know where this heiau was from the oldest maps that were here. And so we can come, come to this place and do this. In fact, years ago, when we first started making this observance, staff of the Waikiki Aquarium noticed what we were doing outside of their fence. And after we were done, asked us what that was all about. And we explained to them that we were recognizing the changing of the seasons from the winter into the summer season. And they said, we'd like you to do that every year. And we want to be part of that. And that was, that was great. It's an opportunity for us to talk about the history of these things, the way Hawaiian worldview looks at the universe and the changing of the time over the year, and to, and to honor that. My name is Jessica Paros. I'm the volunteer coordinator here at the Waikiki Aquarium. So Seasons in the Sea is a cultural observation that we hold annually here at the Waikiki Aquarium. Here at the Waikiki Aquarium, education is at the forefront of all of our endeavors. Um, bringing Hawaii traditions and culture to a public place where the public can get involved and also see more practices like this is really important. Um, early Hawaiians they had a very sustainable relationship with the ocean. So it's really important for the public and for the residents of our islands to understand the relationship that we have with our environment. And it's really important for all of this traditions to be passed on from generation to generation so that we can make these connections with how we're living today and how our, um, our impacts can actually change the environment. Mm -hmm.